Hello everybody and welcome to this route review video for the new Train Sim World Free Glossop Line. If this is the first video you've seen by me, then my name's Richard and I'm a freight train driver and former passenger train driver based in the southeast of England. Before we jump in, I have got to tell you that all the views and opinions expressed within this video are solely my own, may not affect those of any companies I may be employed by or associated with. Also, Dovetail Games have given me this key completely free of charge, but all the views and opinions are my own. So let's press the button and jump in to Train Sea World 3. And there we have it, Glossop Line, Manchester to Hadfield and Glossop. This release is on the 27th of June at a price of 19.99. However, as the train is the class 323 and that's been reused from the Birmingham Cross City Line, if you own the Birmingham Cross City Line, you will get a 10% loyalty discount, um, which is pretty good of them. So, we're going to have a look at what we've got with the route. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six scenarios there. Um, we've got the on guard scenario, which I've done a separate video for, which gives us fully interactive and working guard mode. We have to check tickets and everything, which is really good. Um, we've also got... There's another um, scenario on here, which involves going out and taking pictures, which adds another new gameplay feature, which is quite nice. So yeah, really good to have uh, a variety of scenarios there. If we go into timetable mode... You can see we can do the on foot as usual. We've got the class 323 Hyper Networker in Northern branded livery. So this is just a reskin version of the um, Cross City train. Uh, the one that comes with Cross City. However, it's still a really, really nice train. Uh, we've got 158 layers from the Midland Main Line. We've got class 66, class 37 and class 20 services. So we've got the railhead treatment train uh, layers on there. Also some rail tours um, and some steam as well. For the purpose of this video... We are, of course, going to do the Class 323. As you can see there, we've done two Golf 07 service already. Um, and we've got a fair amount of timetabled services. Uh, I haven't counted them, and I'm not going to, but there is a fair amount on there. We've also got some um, TMD, some depot runs and bits and bobs, and there's some empty coaching stock on there that, that you can do as well, which is nice for variety. Um, most of the routes, as you'll notice, are... Mm part one and part two and the reason for that is if I zoom right in on the little route map down here when you get down to the end of the route it's moving very slowly when you get right down to the end of the route Glossop is here and Hadfield is here and there's actually a bit of track that goes across here so the trains coming from Manchester they go down to Glossop change ends then up to Hadfield but they've done this in two parts so your part one goes down to Glossop you load up part two and then up to Hadfield but when you get to Glossop if you are quick enough and you're not late uh, you can jump out the cab change ends get in the other end and take it without coming out of the game however the AI can get a little bit overzealous if you like and can sometimes start that journey before you've had time to change ends so let's jump into a service and have a little drive let's do Manchester Piccadilly to Hadfield via Glossop Part 1. There we go. We're going to jump into 2 Golf 1 6. I will be releasing a couple of route learning videos um, over the coming days as well. Sort of telling you the junction names, giving you breaking points and stuff like that. So if you want to drive the route HUD list, uh, do look out for those. Um, which will be coming out over the next couple of days. Okay, class 323 Northern Trains, 135 tonnes, three coaches, 74 yards. We are stopping at Ashbury's, Guidebridge, Flowerfield, Newton for Hyde, Godley, Hattersley, Broadbottom, um, Dinting and Glossop. So first thing we're going to do is get our train set up. We are going to do all the usual bits and bobs. Um, I'm going to leave the DSD Vigilance... Vigilance out and the reason I'm gonna and I'm gonna isolate the DSD as well The reason I'm gonna do that is because if we start walking round And we miss it because we're getting nice outside shots or walking around looking at the train um, I don't want the train to come up in a heap because I've missed the safety systems So okay key in into neutral There we go doors open on our right hand side Guards key in. So the train is pretty much as it was on Cross City. We will have a little look around the outside so you can see in the new livery. Uh, we do have the GSMR which has some degree of functionality. I still think it's a little bit buggy from what I've seen. Um, you don't need to register it as such. It is kind of um, 
pre-registered. Pretty much the same as it was in the Cross City. Nevertheless, it's really good to have that in there. And something I'd like to see on uh, more trains in the future, definitely, going forward. So, did I not unlock the doors? Let's unlock the doors. Let's jump out and have a look around. So there is our Northern 323. It's a really nice model and it's got pretty decent sounds in it as well. Um, and using the decent North, the proper Northern branding as well, which is always good to see. We'll have a quick scoot around Manchester Piccadilly. Obviously we've got no... Excuse me, coughing. Obviously we've got no Virgin train services or anything like that in here, which is a little bit disappointing. Um, but understandable because we don't have those in game. But they have padded it out quite nicely with 323s. And I did just see on the Oxford Road side of the station, the through side, we've got a freight going through as well. So there's there's quite a few freight trains that I've noticed going up and down, which is which is really good. So looking back at the station then, really, really nicely modelled. The scenery goes off quite a bit in the distance. Got 323 going off the other side there. Yeah, feels pretty immersive. It, it doesn't feel like anything cuts off. It feels like the scenery sort of goes almost as far as the eye can see, which is really nice. Anyway, let's jump back into our train and see if we can get this to work. Um, door lock. Just finding my driving notes here. Okay, so we're stopping at Ashby's. Ashbury's, that should be. So again, really gorgeous lighting there coming through the station roof here at Manchester Piccadilly. 15 miles an hour coming out of the station. And it does look pretty nice. Let's give it some horn action. And the light speed's just going up to 25 there. I'm not going to talk too much about the speeds in the route because I um, have done a sort of a full route learning video. Um, which, if it's not out at the time of watching this video, it will be out. It's actually going to come out on release day. I'm loving those LED signals on the gantry there. And they pop quite nicely as well, which is really good to see. Uh, so where are we now? Good for 45. And we've got a green... Just about see that freight train off in the distance there as well. So just coming up on our left we've got um, Ardwick Depot. Uh, there are a couple of services that you can take into the depot there and you can berth and stuff which is quite nice to see. And uh, we're coming through Ardwick Station at the moment. We've got the train wash there as well. speeding <laughs> so the Glossop line isn't isn't the longest line in the world um, it's only about I think 20 minutes half an hour each way depending on what you want from a route um, that's either a good thing or a bad thing. For me personally, 20 minute half an hour runs are ideal. 
I don't get a huge amount of time to play games. Get some breaks in for Ashby. I don't get a huge amount of time to, to, to play games, generally speaking. So when I can sit down and do a whole route that's 20 minutes to half an hour, that, that for me is, is spot on. And I like the fact, and I, I've mentioned this before, I mentioned it with Midland Mainline, I mentioned it with Edinburgh Glasgow. Um, I like the fact that it's a complete route as well, that I can drive end to end, I can do a complete service, that I'm not um, getting off halfway through the service. So, so that really does appeal to me when it comes to routes. Um, there's enough to keep you busy in this as well. I don't particularly like routes where I'm forever in a day just kind of driving along with nothing to do. This has got quite a few speed limit changes, it's got quite a few station stops, so there, there's plenty enough to keep me busy. Um, which for me and my style of playing really does appeal to me. Let's see if we can get a nice flyby shot leaving the station. Again, the depth of scenery is, is really good. It does go off quite a long way into the distance. A little bit of artefacting in places that I've noticed, but I think that might be a problem with my computer rather than the route. So we're good up to 60. Ardwick West Junction, line to um, Staley Bridge. No, I'm in the wrong place. <laughs> uh, Asbury East Junction, that was. The line to Bell Bellevue. So next station on our service is going to be Guide Bridge. We get up to 60 miles an hour. Like I say, if you want all the junction names and the breaking points, do go and check out those route learning videos. Builder's Yard on the right hand side there. Yeah, I really I really do like the fact that although it's not a not a huge amount of money, you know, you are getting a slight discount if you already own um the cross city. I mean it's only I know it's only ten percent, but it's it's better than nothing at the end of the day and it is a nice little touch. Um £20 for this route for the length of it sounds uh, seems to me about right because although it's not the longest route in the world you are getting that additional guards mode um, it, the whole thing just feels kind of kind of its own little nice package and at that price it seems it's to me anyway it seems fairly reasonable um, I'm sure there are people out there that would, would disagree with me if this had come out at a 25 or 30 pound DLC I'd be saying no that's you know too expensive um, thing is if this had come out a year ago this would have been like a 14.99 DLC but because of inflation that's obviously why it's a little bit more expensive now but I, I think it's well priced it does look pretty pretty nice. It does look pretty nice. As we come through Fairfield, I believe this station is. Guide bridge in 1.1 miles. Yeah, be interested as always, guys, to hear um, to hear your thoughts on the route. Do post in the comment section and let me know what you think of it. In terms of bugs, because this is always the the thing when a new route comes out, isn't it? I have not found anything that's going to stop you playing or going to stop you enjoying the game. For me, and I think it might be more of a me issue than a, a game issue. Sorry, I've got a terrible cough. Um, it might be more of a me issue than a game issue. There is quite a lot of artefacting going on in places. But yeah, I've, I've definitely not... I mean, I've, I've probably had a good couple of hours on the route. Um, I've not found anything that I would say... We're supposed to stop here. Oh, good. <laughs> 
That's team visits for the manager. The emergency brakes work. Um, yeah, I've, I've not found anything that I would say was, was prohibiting. It's going to stop you playing. Um, a lot of the stations, favourite bugbear of mine, as you all know, I've mentioned it on lots of different routes. Um, let's pull up to the right stopping point. A lot of the stations don't have stop car markers on them. I don't know if you can hear that. Church bells in the background. That's a really nice touch. Oh, that looks really atmospheric. The river going down there and the church bells in the background. That, that's... That's pretty. They've stopped ringing. Yeah, like I said, there's a few of the stations um, don't have to stop. Doors are shut. What's going on? There we go. There's a bug. Uh, <coughs> yeah, a lot of the stations don't have stop car marks, which for me is a is an annoyance. Um, especially if you like to drive without the HUD on. But it's it's not the end of the world. It's just frustrating. One of the other things I would have absolutely have loved to have seen um, in the game, and again, it's something that we've spoken about before, would be to have uh, an AI conductor on. So in real life, this route operates with a conductor. Obviously, as we've spoken about, and you'll see in one of my other videos, you can act as the conductor yourself on this route, which is really good. You can actually be the conductor and buzz the train away and close the doors. But it'd be really nice if we had some kind of... Um, dispatch mechanism in there so as the driver I'm not handling the doors so when I stop the doors open doors close I get and then I repeat it back and off we go so it'd be really nice for, for, for immersion if we didn't have to do that ourselves because that's something I'd definitely like to see in the future the other thing as well and I, I know it's been mentioned multiple times by multiple different people would just be uh, announcements even if we're not having on-train announcements, just having your station announcements and stuff like that, that, that would be really, really nice to have. I think, again, it, it would just add so much to the immersion. Um, I don't know whether it's a resources issue or whether there's there's sound issues with Unreal Engine or, or what the situation is. But just having those kind of, you know, the next station is, the train now standing at platform, blah, 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 all those sorts of things. Just adds to that kind of whole soundscape and that immersion. It's For me personally, I think the sounds of the trains are pretty good. But when it comes to soundscapes, um, I, I think that's one of the things Dovetail doesn't do so well. But saying that, we've just had the church bells at the last station, which was which was really, really nice. Um, yeah, I, I think sound is a big part of immersion. Free, are we going to get this bang on? Free. Free, free yards, come on. No. We'll take it at that, we'll take it at that. Flowery fields. Why is it called flowery fields? I do not know. I have absolutely no idea. Uh, the timetable's pretty tight on here as well. You you do need to kind of kind of watch it. It is pretty tight. I've completely lost the train. Um, there it is. That's the back of it, there, isn't it? Yeah. I think, operationally, with having to change ends down at Glossop, um, it's quite an interesting route, operationally. There's some, uh, you'll see in a minute, there's a bit of single line operation. Um, there's some what we call fixed distant boards. It's, operationally, it's got quite a lot going for it.
Newton for Hyde, platform two. Again, yeah, look. No stop car marks. See, if we just sit here for a second, I was talking about um, soundscapes and how soundscape helps with immersion. If we're sitting here, this doesn't sound like we're on a train. If we had kind of, you know, mobile phones going off or muffled conversation or sort of people tapping or like, you know, music out of someone's AirPods that's all muffled that you can't hear and people rustling around and, and stuff like that and a little bit of banging, it would just add to the immersion of this environment so much more in my opinion. Um, the next station is Godly, so the CIS is working inside, sorry, the PIS, Passenger Information System, uh, is working inside the train, which is really nice to see. Let's... We do have a little bit more of a look at the inside of the train in the guards um, video as well, so do go and check that one out. Off to Godly. As indeed the passenger information did say in the train. I think because of the length of this route as well, it's a really good one to um, to learn, to learn to drive hardless. If you're looking for a route where you can get your braking points really well, you can learn all the names of your junks and your stations and stuff, um, this is a really good route for that. Passing over the M62, I believe that one is there. Uh, M67, sorry, my bad. As we approach Godly. Let's see if we can do a stop at the station from an outside view. I mean the brakes are pretty sharp on the 323 to be fair, so... Oh! <laughs> that didn't end well, that didn't end well. We have got the noise of the traffic in the background as well there, which is good. So the soundscape on this is, is <coughs> excuse me, is better than what it has been on some of the previous routes. I think that's that's fair to say. And we're just having a quick look around all these stations as we go along. I am going to do a live stream on this route in the coming days as well. Um, where I will spend a sort of a little bit more time and sort of show you things that, that you want to see. So I'm kind of just sort of showing things as we're going along and having a um, almost like an overview of the route. Try and get a good vantage point of going across the bridge there. So the soundscape here sounds really good. That was quite good with the birds tweeting and the traffic and then the train going across. That that sounded pretty immersive. So this is Godly Junction, the closed Godly Junction platforms. Caught me out the first time, I must say. Because we're already counting down in yards to Hattersley, so it did catch me out. Hattersley has an offside platform. And there's a little electrical box on the left hand side, that is your braking point, giving it all away. The track does seem to do weird things as you come into Hattersley though, I've noticed here. There's a little bit of a cant, but it almost feels a little bit jerky. I don't think that's unfair to say. hitting these stations way too hard at the moment. And offside door release here at Hattersley. 
And again, just jumping into that ex external camera and going to have a little nosy around while we're loading up the passengers. Hey, that's pretty cool. That's as far as we can go. And we are off to Broadbottom. I wonder if YouTube's going to demonetize me and take away my 20p for making this video for saying the word Broadbottom. <laughs> you never know. Uh, so we've got Broadbottom, Dinting and then Glossop. So yeah, not, not a particularly long route at all really. I like the way you come sort of out of Manchester Piccadilly and there's tracks everywhere and then you kind of come more and more out into the countryside into this more rural scene, um, which is really lovely. It's predominantly uphill as well, the gradients on this route going towards uh, Glossop and then coming back it's predominantly downhill. And you do have to watch your gradients as well because in places they can catch you out, especially on the downhills when you're, you're trying to stop at some of your stations. It can be a little bit nasty and really catch you out. Broadbottom via uh, Broadbottom station again. Really, really nicely modelled here. Oh, I'm loving the water on the floor back there. I'm gonna have to go back and look at that. Um, now look at my yards at the top left. Eight, seven, six, five, four, three, two. It went three, two, and then started going up again. And I've noticed that in a couple of places where the the stopping points you can't get a zero. You kind of get five, four, three, two, three, four, five. Um, which is a little bit annoying. Hey, what's going on there? Oh, it's the overhead wire. <laughs> My bad. Puddle on the platform with the reflection. That that's that's quite nice. Thirteen fifty four Hadfield on time. Right, I'm going to jump into external view now because we have got um, Broadsbottom Viaduct coming up. This is why we disabled the safety systems. Again, the, the, the draw distance on the scenery is really nice. Where's the train? There it is. We do love a good viaduct. <laughs> Got to get a screenshot of that. I mean, it's it is pretty. It is very pretty. It is very pretty indeed. So our next station stop will be Dinting. So I think for a lot of people this route might become um, quite boring quite quickly in so much that it is quite a short route, it's predominantly one type of traction. But for people that kind of want to simulate 
being a train driver and they kind of want to get into that whole kind of train driver mindset and stuff. Being able to do the same route over and over again is brilliant. I mean, if you want to kind of go full out train driver, do this route about three times, go and make yourself a cup of tea, then do it another three or four times. And that's what like a shift as a train driver would be like, because you are going to do a lot of repetitive routes and stuff like that as a, as a train driver. So you can kind of get the, the full train driver experience. Okay, we have a fixed distance. So the board on our left is a fixed distance. That is, basically we treat that as a single yellow signal. So we treat our next signal as at danger. We should sight the next signal just coming around the corner here. The next signal doesn't have an AWS magnet on it, which I found a little bit strange as well. Whether that's a case of it doesn't have one in real life or not, I don't know. It's just a little bit strange. So position 4 route indicator on this signal tells us we are going down towards Glossop. The main aspect would mean we were going direct to uh, Hadfield. And this is the beautiful Ditling Viaduct coming up as well. With the football pitches down there. Unfortunately it won't let me go further than that away from the viaduct. But... Really nice route again. I just love the draw distance. And then 10 miles an hour as we come round into Dinting. Again, no stop car markers here, which is... If that's my biggest complaint... Oh no, there is... A, my apologies, I take it all back. Three. Two. Doors open at Dint, Dinting. So Dinting is a triangular station. So straight on would take us directly down to Hadfield, down to the right takes us to Glossop. Uh, what we do is we carry on down here to Glossop, change ends, and then we come round this sort of spur here to, to Hadfield. What we will do though when we get down to Glossop is we'll, we'll do the run round to Hadfield, but we'll change the driving conditions. So we're just 10 miles an hour around the corner here. Nice flange squirrel sound effects as we come round. Standing in a position of safety, of course. Which is four foot or 1.25 meters at this speed. See my train driver rules videos for more information. Trying to get kind of lots of outside shots here. Show off the route a little bit. And we've got 25 45 differential speed there. And then we start dropping down into Glossop. So we get the speed up to 40 shut off because it is a slight downhill gradient. I'm not sure if the, the it might just be my eyes, but the trees look a bit autumnal, and this is kind of set to June, so. I'm not quite sure what's going on with that. 
uh, get some braking speed. I've got a 10. We've got another fixed distance signal on our left there. So we treat that as one yellow. Our red is, of course, the buffer stops. And then we are 10 into Glossop. Now approaching the buffer stops here at Glossop, you've got TPWS as you have approaching all buffer stops. And I can tell you it does work and it is modelled in game. So do not go over these at more than 10 miles an hour. Otherwise you will come up in a heap with an emergency brake application. And that will be tea and biscuits with the manager. Just passing over the TPWS grids now. And six foot away from the buffer stops, or thereabouts. And we go brake step free, DRA, neutral, doors on the right. Door key off. Oh, we've pressed aux off. We weren't supposed to do that. <laughs> okay, so what you can do after you've shut down the cab is you can get out, run to the other end, get in the other end, and then work the service round to um, Hadfield. If you are late, however, the AI gets a little bit excited and tries to basically take the train and get it gone. So sometimes you haven't got time to do that. The way around that is to leave the back cab door open. Leave the back cab door open, run to the front, get in the front so you've taken the train off of the AI, then go to the back and close the back cab door, and that, that will kind of overcome that. What you can also do, though, if you want to, so if we go to... Um, What's the in-game time? 14, so it's the 14.05 service. So if we go back to main menu, what we can do is the the part two of that. Oh, no. Wrong button. We'll try that again. <laughs> okay, to the trains. Choose a route. There we go. Timetable. That one there. That one there. That's the one we've just completed. So there's your part one, and then you've got your part two. Which is literally your bit round the corner from Glossop to Hadfield. Uh, so we're going to do this one in a lightning storm. Just so we can have a little look at the, the changing conditions and see how that looks. Uh, I haven't done this yet. I haven't done any nighttime runs or dusk runs or anything. So this will be interesting. Let's see how it is. Yeah, beautifully, beautifully atmospheric. In a way, I think these routes look better in the rain than what they do um, what they do during the sunlight, actually. I do find some of the lighting physics inside Train Sea World 3 can be a little bit funky at times. So when you've got weather turned on, I think they, they do look beautiful. Um, again, we'll do our safety systems. The only one we're going to put in is the AWS. Same as we did before. We'll keep the vigilance off um, for the minute. So this is literally Glossop to Hadfield. Uh, we've got our wiper control down here. Slow. And we got umbrellas! Oh, hey! Everyone loves umbrellas. Thirty-five and thirty, so we've got a little bit of time before departure. That's interesting. I'm sure the AWS button was a B. It might not have been. It could be completely me. Go back and check the video. Um, I'm sure the AWS button was a big yellow button and wasn't a little metal one. Could be completely wrong. I could be completely wrong. Okay, we're going to be naughty and we're going to leave early because train doors will close 30 seconds prior to departure. And 
and we're just going to do the bit of route round to Hadfield and that will be the end for today's video. So we are just 10 miles an hour leaving here. What we're going to do though, the next station is Hadfield, yeah the passenger information system is working. As is the rain on the side windows, that, yeah that's nice. Yep. So the doors are actually locked out and we can't open them when we're driving along. That is as we would expect. Uh, if anyone remembers the first stream we done on Edinburgh, Glasgow. when you could drive along and open the doors. The least said about that, the better. Although that has been updated now and it's, it's fairly decent to be fair. So we're up to 45, we are 1.1 mile away, so we're about 5 minutes from the end of this video. And we're up to 45 there and then the speed's going to drop down to 25. And then 10 mile an hour all the way around the corner. So we've got a green, we've got a position 4 route indicator, really love the way the signal stands out. Like I say, I do think these routes actually look better um, when there's weather and stuff turned on than what they do uh, without it. So the position 4 route indicator tells us we're going around to Hadfield. If we had the main, uh, if we had the main aspect, we would be going back to Dinting and then on to Manchester. So we're going to hold that at 25. It does go to 10 just around the corner here. Just about there, I'm going to be speeding. But not too bad. And squeal again. And we're approaching Dinting East Junction. Good to see the rain stops when we go under the bridge as well. The, the one thing you don't get when you go under bridges, you, you get it in tunnels, but you don't get it when you go under bridges. You don't get any um, like drop in the cab light level if the cab light level stays consistent. And that's something you used to get going back to the day. Open BVE, for example, as you went under bridges, you, the, the cab lighting level would dip and come back up. Train sim does it in tunnels, but it doesn't do it when you go under bridges and stuff, which is it's a little bit um, it's a little bit frustrating because I think it would be quite easy to put in. Right, 0 0.7 miles from Hadfield, we are good for 40. <coughs> 15 coming up, we'll get a fixed distance signal any minute, which will be our one yellow. Red is the buffer stops at Hadfield. Again, TPWS is fitted going into Hadfield to keep your speed below 10 or you will trigger that going in. So there we go guys, I am going to do a live stream on this um, in the next couple of days. If you are watching this at the time of release, I will be live streaming this um, not on release day, probably the day after release day, so that will be Wednesday due to my work schedule. Um, so do check that out, it would be great to see you there. Uh, we can play some of the rail tours and do some other bits and bobs as well in that time remembering the 15. For me personally, at the price point this route is, it's good. I like the fact it's a complete route. I like the fact you can go end to end. Um, operationally, you've got the, the changing ends and bits. You've got the guard scenario. You've got the um, going out and taking pictures scenario. The route looks pretty nice. It's missing stop car markers. There's a bit of uh, clipping and occlusion 
I think occlusion is the word I'm looking for uh, in places, but I think that might be a me issue rather than a game issue. Um, not going to test the TPWS there. Yeah, it's 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 another welcome addition to Train Sim World. I would like to see some longer routes, your East Coast Mainline, your West Coast Mainline, and bits and bobs like that. And I would see, like, like to see some of the other routes that we've got, uh, the existing routes kind of joined up and bits and bobs. That would be really good as well. But it's it's certainly not bad. It's certainly not bad. It's a good fun route to drive. There's enough going on to keep you busy. You've got enough station stops. You've got enough signalling, enough speed limit changes. It, it's short enough that you can learn it quite easily, but it's long enough to keep you busy. And like I say, if you want to get into that kind of full train driver mentality where you're you're basically booking on and working a shift, if that's how you like to play your game, you can do end-to-end -end on this, which, which is really nice. I don't like getting off halfway through a route. I like being able to do end-to-end -end on the routes, which is really nice. You've got your depot runs on there, and your ECS and stuff like that. There's a couple of rail tours and, and bits and bobs. So I think th there is enough in there to keep it interesting. Um... And for the price point and the length of the route, I, I think it's I think it's a good solid route. There are a few bugs in it, like I said, with the, the stop car marks and, and a couple of other bits and bobs. And I dare say that, you know, other people are going to point out that this and that's missing. I don't know the route. I've never travelled over it. So my, my, what I'm telling you, the kind of my perspective of the route is from um, a layman. It's from an outsider. Someone who lives along the route may be able to say, this isn't right, that isn't right, this isn't right, etc, etc. So I'm kind of giving you giving you the point of view of, of someone who's never never traversed the route or, or never gone over it. So from, from that point of view and from kind of a, a gameplay point of view, it's nice. It's a good job. It, it would get probably a 6, 7 out of 10 from me. Definitely. Put the stop car markers in, you get an 8 out of 10. <laughs> That's for sure. Um, get that soundscape sorted out. But yeah, it's it's certainly it's certainly good. And with the guards feature and stuff, and I look forward to seeing what happens with the uh, in the future with these sorts of things. Thank you very much for watching, guys. If you have liked this video, please do click that like button and subscribe. Uh, any comments you've got on the route or the video, do leave them in the comment section below. And if you're interested in real railways, train driving, working on the railways, aviation, buses, anything like that, then do feel free to join our very friendly Discord community. You'll find a link in the description below. You can also follow my train driver adventures over on my social media channels, which are on the screen right now. Now. Thank you very much Dovetail Games for giving me this route free of charge. Do you hope you've enjoyed the video guys and until next time check out the live stream, check out the route loading videos, check out the guards video on the route and I hope to see you again in another video very soon. Thanks for watching.